If you're on the second half of your life, what I like to call life 2.0, that's mostly if you're over age 40, but closer you get to 50, the more life 2.0 you are, you've probably had more than a few passing thoughts about when this whole journey is going to end and what you're going to do with the time that you have left. And today I want to talk about how those two concepts are very closely linked to one another. How the amount of time that you have left may very well be dependent on how you choose to use that time. As a kid, I was blessed to have two of the best grandparents anybody could ask for. My sister and I would fight like cats and dogs every other day of the year, unless we were at grandmom's house. And then grandmom would tell us that we were angels and we would do everything in our ability to live up to that billing. My grandfather was a hardworking, kind man. He had a farm that we just loved. I mean, and he had a big Ford tractor. You know, we would play in the fields. Our dog would run in the fields after bunny rabbits. And it was a very idyllic little world that they lived in. Giant red barn. You know, we would pick and shuck vegetables, and it was just a great place to be, a great place to be a kid. And they also had an, in, an in-ground swimming pool, but it was just wonderful. And um, my grandfather would run that farm, and it was a small farm. I think he had like 12 acres, and he had um, a job as an assistant manager at Kroger. And he loved that job, too, and he took a great deal of pride in the produce. Oh my God, when I go to modern stores and I go into the produce section and I see that the food is in bad shape, I always think of him because he took so much pride. And he would sell the store a lot of the produce that he would grow fresh out of his farm right onto their, their um, shelves. So yeah, he, uh, he definitely wanted to make sure that stuff was as good as it could possibly be. And there was a big competition in that area. He was in um, Warner Robins, Georgia, Macon, Georgia area. and. Uh, Piggly Wiggly was the, uh, the other competitor in town, so he always would go and spy on Piggly Wiggly. But anyway, I'm digressing. So he was a great man, hardworking man, worked a lot until he retired, you know, at 65 or 67 or whenever he was forced into retirement. Maybe it was 70. Maybe it was 70 when they forced him into retirement. And back then, of course, he had a pension and he had um, health insurance through uh, retirement from, from Kroger. I mean, he had a hell of a, a deal. And um, after he retired, he went from being a hardworking, round-the-clock kind of guy to living in a little house with my grandma. There was no farm, not much land, and uh, and he watched the Atlanta Braves a lot, you know. And he uh, watched a lot of TV. And within, I want to say, within 18 months, he had had uh, bypass surgery, and um, within. A couple years of that, he had to be uh, placed in a home with um, dementia. And soon after that, he died. Um, after he left the house um, to go to the home, it was not more than six months later that my grandmother died. They were um, very much in love in terms of their relationship. They slept in different bedrooms, you know, they had different a different kind of lifestyle than what I would have um, guessed, but they very much were, were companions. They, they supported one another. They had an idyllic life. But my point is, is that when he stopped working, when he um, became sedentary, it was like someone had lit a fuse and the, just a matter of time. And he basically self-destructed from that point forward. He went from being a very, very busy man, a very hardworking man, a man with a lot of purpose in his life, to being a man who had literally nothing to do. And I think that once that purpose was gone, um, he had no reason to stay. You know, his life was over. And uh, not to say he didn't enjoy things. I mean, I think back then the Braves were doing pretty well, so he was pretty excited about that. But uh, yeah, he, uh, he sort of lost his, his desire, his will, his zest for life, if you will. Plus, I think physically, just sort of sitting so much and not being as active as he was probably played a role on his on his health as well. So I've come across some research when I was uh, researching a book by a doctor who was looking specifically at activity and how activity influences um, health. 
and they were looking at um, you know uh, modern um, hunter gatherers and how old people fit into society and what was very interesting is that the old people in their society were just as strong and just as vital as the young people. They were physically just as strong. They were just as lean and just as active. They contributed at the same level, especially the older men. The older men were very, very physically active and very engaged in, uh, in life. Um, but here in the West, in our modern world, where we think that retirement is some kind of a, a golden ticket that we're all shooting for, I think it's wrong. I think we've got the wrong idea that uh, retirement is not a time to um, kick them up, you know, and to say, okay, I'm done. I'm just going to sit on my ass now and maybe take a couple cruises and then I'll cash in my chips. I think that's sort of a, I mean, if that's your plan, I mean, I'm not going to knock it. If that's your plan, you do it. But I just don't see that as being a great way to spend my retirement. I don't want to just be sitting around waiting for the Grim Reaper to show it by my door. So here's some of the things that I've found that I think you can do that will enhance not only um, your, your health and your retirement, but it's also a really powerful tool um, for getting over you know, a tragedy or a loss, a divorce. It really is um, kind of got this built-in therapeutic effect that I think that if you can create this in your life, it will make an enormous difference, not just in the quality of your life, but in the length of time that you have left to live. When you bring purpose to your life, you also bring value to your life. And that's criti uh, critically important um, to enhancing the length of time that you get to spend on this planet. because. When you are valuing your experience, there's something psychological about it that, that pushes us forward. We've all known people who've suffered, you know, through the loss of a, of a spouse or a loved one or someone like that, and they die almost immediately afterwards. That's kind of what happened to my grandparents. And it's not that they were necessarily sick, it was that the heartbreak and the state of mind that went along with just continuing to live day to day disappeared. And, um, by adding purpose and value to your life, you remove that, that aspect. You currently will be, you'll be in a state of continuous contribution to the world. And first of all, to yourself and to your own well-being by finding a purpose. And what I'm talking about are, um, and each one of us has our own criteria for this, and what's meaningful to me probably won't be meaningful to you, but you'll know it when you see it. So things that I like to do that bring purpose to my life is, um, you know, I exercise regularly and I really love um, my coaching practice where I get to work with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis and really help them deal with their health problems. Because in that environment, not only am I helping them physically get past whatever problems they have, so many of these problems are actually linked to something else psychologically, I mean, their job, their, their relationship, their, their kids, the stress they have in their lives. All these things are tied together and being able to work with people and help them kind of push through some of this crap and actually achieve a level of health that makes them feel really um, good is extremely gratifying. So it gives me a great deal of purpose in working with those people. And it works because of two things. One, I have to become better in order to do this. So I've got to do research. I've got to understand the problems that they're facing. I've got to, um, I've got to become a better person in order to be able to accomplish this task. And two, they benefit from it. So not only am I benefiting by learning all this stuff and um, having this experience, but they're also a recipient of this information. And they are benefiting from the work that I'm putting in. So there is this win-win that happens. And I think that's a critical element to whatever it is you decide to do, is finding something that you can give that has a, a need that someone else benefits from. Because if you're giving, to someone else and they are appreciating it, whether they state they appreciate it or not, it, um, it really, really adds um, power to the purpose that you, you're you bringing to the world, that you, that you, you have in your heart for, for, for yourself. And it, it makes you more essential. When you're an essential part of life, 
life does not want to let go of you. You know, when you're playing a very important role, life really wants you to stay. Now I know that doesn't work all the time. I know there's some wonderful people out there who are doing some great work and it just seems um, inexplicable that some, somehow they just pass away, you know. So I don't have all the answers. But I do know that psychologically and emotionally, if you are in a place where you're giving to others and you're benefiting it in it yourself, you're going to have a healthier state of mind and the likelihood that you're going to die, say, from depression or loneliness or sadness or any of those negative um, states of mind that we can get into, especially if we're alone and, and we're getting older, um, it's easy to fall into that trap. Um, so I think it's really, really important to to find that essential purpose, that, that thing that you can do that will benefit other people. One of the critical mistakes that a lot of people make is thinking that success is a destination, that it's an outcome. There's really only one destination and only one outcome that we're all going to experience, and that is death. Success is not death. Success is a process. Success is the journey. Every day is a measure of your success. Sometimes you've got to look really closely and you've got to pull really hard to find that success in your day-to-day -day journey. Some days are better than others. We all know that. But if you wake up every morning and you decide that you're going to be a success today, then you make every moment that you face just a little more successful with your interactions with other people, with the jobs that you have to do, the tasks you need to complete, whatever it is, you just find a way to make it a little bit more successful. Um, so how that translates into your purpose is as you are developing whatever it is that you want to do that's gonna bring this essential nature to your life, having that success mindset really does make a difference because you, then look at each interaction, whether it's um, learning something new, you know, so that you can be of more service to someone else, or if it's actually engaging in providing that service with someone, you know, being in a relationship with somebody and helping them with whatever it is that they're dealing with. Um, that success mindset really does play a difference because you bring this level of enthusiasm and positive energy to that situation that is infectious and just that energy in and of itself really, really, really helps people. Plus, if you're in a success frame of mind and you're just thinking about how you can make this interaction and every interaction just a little more successful, what ends up happening is you start stringing together this life that is successful, this successful life, and you're no longer, um, makes it really hard to go blue. You know, it's really hard to become sad. It makes it really difficult to, uh, to feel sorry for yourself when you had the success mindset and keeping in mind that regardless of how much money you have in the bank or what car you drive or what house you live in, none of those things are necessarily measures of, of success. I mean, you can measure success if you want to that way, but I don't think that's really where the true success lies because the only arbiter, the only judge, jury, and executioner of your success is you. And I mean that completely. You decide whether you're gonna be successful based on your lifestyle and what you're experiencing. You are the judge, you are the jury. You're gonna pass the sentence for that level of success. If you are feeling really great and successful, I guarantee you that inner jury is going to reward you over and over and over again. But if you're not, you know, if you feel like you're not living up to your possible, your potential, your, what you're capable of doing, what you could be delivering to the world, and you're living in some negative state of mind, and it's easy to get into that negative state of mind. You know, if you're divorced and you've gone through a, a loss and you've suffered financial setbacks, and um, I mean, I know that all that stuff can really get in your head, but you can, um, you have control over just how impactful those things are on you psychologically, emotionally, on a day-to-day -day basis. You can decide when you wake up every day whether you're going to have a success mindset. Then finally, that executioner you know, if you're in that good frame of mind and you are pushing forward and trying to improve yourself on a daily basis and looking for ways to become continuously vital, continuously um, critical to the life force, not only in you, but in the people that your, li your, your life touches, um, that executioner will reward you 
over and over and over again. It'll keep pushing back that end date, you know? Your expiration date gets relabeled over and over and over again. But if you're staying in that negative, um, lonely, sad, resentful, unforgiving place, then uh, yeah, that, that executioner is coming fast. You're gonna find the Grim Reaper standing at your door before you know it. In a lot of my videos, I have talked about how forgiveness is such a big part of the divorce process. And, and in the comments, you know, some of you guys are struggling with that. Some of you guys just reject it out of hand, like it's just not something I can do. And I'm not a real religious guy, but I do, uh, I, you know, I went to Bible school when I was a kid, and I was an altar boy, and I went to church every week. So I know all about the teachings of Jesus, and I certainly have a great deal of respect and admiration for his life and, and what he represents in our lives and our culture. And, um, you know, I'm a very spiritual person, and I see Jesus as, a, as an enlightened being that we can all use as an example. And I understand Christianity, which in my mind right now has been, you know, distorted into something completely different. But when you look at the true nature of Christianity, Christ, the whole purpose of this is about forgiveness. Like, that's, that's it. Like, that, he, that's his whole gig. You know what I mean? It's all about forgiveness. And if you don't believe in forgiveness, then you need to stop and question your belief in Christianity because those two things are not congruent. Christianity is all about forgiveness. That's what, that's what his whole purpose of his existence was. And, you know, when they put him on the cross and they crucified him, you can see how easy it would be not to be forgiving under those circumstances. And to forgive Judas, the disciple who betrayed him. Think about your ex-wife now, you know? Yeah, she may have raked you over the coals. She may have robbed you. She may have lied about you. Hell, she may have even gotten you arrested. I just think that gives you a greater opportunity to forgive, you know? The harder it is, the more important it is. Because if you don't, I'm telling you, man, it just ruins your life. It will ruin your life. And the... Now, I'm not saying you need to forget, forget. I'm not saying you, you know, let her back in your life or you ever trust her again. And quite frankly, you don't even need to tell her that you forgive her. You don't even need to say the words, I forgive you to her. This is all going on inside your head. This is all inside of you. This is a, an inside game. But um, getting to that place where you let go of all that pain, your life will improve dramatically, dramatically. And I'm not just saying that. I know that from real experience. Um, I haven't gone into all the details about why I left my job and um, sold my house and, and um, I've talked a lot about the divorce, but there were a lot of people who um, betrayed me um, during that process and um, coming to forgive them was extremely difficult because they did things, you know, I talked about betrayal in my last video. Um, they betrayed me over and over and over again and they didn't just betray me, they betrayed their values, they betrayed the truth that they live by in some cases, you know what I mean? It was such a wholesale betrayal. And it just, I just became obsessed with it. It just filled my thoughts, how angry I was with them and how, how wrong they were and how um, inexcusable their behavior was and how hypocritical they were. Yeah, that didn't serve me at all. Like that, that just made me miserable, you know? That just, all those thoughts just made me miserable. So I've just developed this process now where if I start having a thought like that, I just stop myself. I literally just become aware of that thought and say, I'm not having that thought today. I am not having that thought today. But it's a critical element in your second half of your life, in your life 2.0. You know, if you're going to live a fulfilling, long, happy life, you gotta get past some of these dark spots that are still haunting you. And if you don't, it's gonna make it really, really tough to to enjoy this last half of your life. I mean, it really will. When you find your purpose, that thing that you can do that makes your life feel a little more essential, that thing that you can do that helps not only you become a better person, but then also helps someone else in their desire to become better, whether it's their health or their state of mind or helping them move or whatever it is, whatever it is, helping your kids, your grandkids, just taking time out to give of yourself to another human being adds that level of vitality to your life and it will heal a lot of the pain that you've gone through and it'll bring light to a lot of those dark places in your life and it will um, 
It'll turn you into a better person. It'll make your life so much better. It creates a feedback loop that becomes circular, where as you become better and you give to others, you get from them this energy of uh, gratitude and, and it feeds back into you that makes you want to do it again and again and again. And it's just a cycle of positive energy. It's this positive feedback loop that is um, just so valuable, so critical to really getting the most out of this life, especially as the time starts to run short. And um, being older people, you know, at the second stage in our life, one of the things that I love about this stage in my life is I feel like I have so much more experience and wisdom that I can bring to the people that I care about. And when I go back 20 or 30 years, you know, I wasn't in a position where I could do that. I had so many other ulterior motives. I had so many other uh, ideas and beliefs about money and success and all those things that polluted my mind, you know, that took me off track, you know, made, me, made it impossible for me to really, really, really be empathetic and compassionate for other people at an extremely deep level. But now, you know, I'm almost 60 years old and, you know, the time is running short and I have this whole different understanding of life and what it means not just to me but to everyone and how this time is short, you know, and your ability to make an impact, well, it's running out. So if you want to leave a legacy, if you want to have uh, an impact on this world, now's the time to do it. And the good news is you're going to benefit from it in the here and now. You're going to get more value out of your life and you'll probably extend your life. You'll get more years in the end. All right, you guys, that's what I got for you today. I certainly hope you've enjoyed the video and you found it useful. If you have, please like and subscribe. You know, I'd love to hear your comments and what your thoughts are about these topics. I know that there's some controversy in it, but I think that for the most part, this is a, just good advice, you know, on how to, how to get focused on how to live your life here at the end. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Stay healthy, and if you can, stay single.